The following video is presented by the Computer History Archives Project. The UNIVAC, Fast Rand Analyzer and Calibrator, Field Engineering Customer Service Unit. Today, we take a look at a vintage UNIVAC Fast Rand Analyzer and Calibrator. At first glance, this 15-pound test unit looks like a piece of rugged 1950s travel luggage. But it is not luggage, and not very rugged. It dates from the 1960s. Its purpose was to analyze and calibrate the magnetic drum storage systems made by Sperry Univac, known as Fast Rand. First available around 1963. The Fast Rand was sold in three models. Fast Rand Model 2 was the most common. These photos of the Model 2 show the overall size of the unit. It housed a rotating metal drum that was 8 feet in length. The unit itself weighed over 5,000 pounds and often required floor reinforcement prior to installation. These were called mass storage systems. Very big and very expensive. For example, back in 1968, 100 megabytes of storage on a fast RAN Model 2 system might cost $140,000 or more, which would equate to over $1.2 million in 2023. Fast RAN was designed for use with Univax Model 1100 computers, and the 418, 490 and 494 series computers. These giant mass storage devices required periodic calibration service, performed by trained UNIVAC field service technicians. The primary tool for this was this portable calibration unit called a clock and signal generator, which we are exploring today. The front panel of the analyzer has four toggle type switches, labeled synchronization, sector or clock, start, and stop, and clear. It also has two rows of 19 indicator lights that would flash green or red, depending on the test results. Examining various parts of the analyzer proved very interesting. Here you will see one of the two wire connectors that link the analyzer unit to the fast rand being calibrated. The first connector is a thin yellow and black wire cable that has 18 contacts and is over 7 feet long, with a hardwired 3x5 plug-in card. The black wire is a thicker cable, about 6 feet long, with 9 wire connections and it also includes a plug-in card hardwired to the end of the cable. That card is dated February 14, 1969, however, most other cards do not have specific dates on them. The cards have various component configurations. One card has a solitary crystal and socket, similar to those seen in a radio transceiver. It is not clear what this card is used for, however, it could perhaps be related to a frequency generator. Most cards contain four transistors as well as numerous resistors and other components. We included photos of some of the cards in the image gallery at the end of this video. We found no information on what these cards plug into, since there are no plug-in slots outside of the analyzer case. Perhaps these are backup cards for those attached to the backplane inside the analyzer, which you will see in a moment. The 20-page documentation booklet that came with our unit, was titled, Clock and Sector Generator, and dated September, 1963. It consisted of typed pages, handwritten notes, and signatures, all related to test specifications. The manual states that it was meant to be used in conjunction with a Tektronix oscilloscope, Model 535A, and a Simpson Model 260 volt ohm meter, and other equipment. It also states, this document contains confidential information of the UNIVAC division of the Sperry Rand Corporation. There are numerous signatures of Sperry Univac officials, dated 1964 and 1965, and numerous fold-out pages with diagrams and other information. The booklet is not really a complete step-by-step -step instruction guide on how to use the calibrator, since it reads more like a collection of notes with approval signatures, for the eventual creation of an actual user manual. That is just a rough guess after reviewing the pages. It would be a great find to get a hold of a full user manual for this calibrator, as that would also help us determine if we have a complete unit, or if there are any components or cables missing. Now it is time to take a look inside the unit itself, and see what's under the hood. Access to the internal components is pretty straightforward. The top is held in place by six flathead screws. After 50 years, the screws are starting to oxidize, and it was a bit tricky to get them out the first time. Phillips screws would have been a better design choice. Inside, there is a 15-inch long backplane, containing 32 slots, each designed to hold a 3x5-inch plug-in card. The plug-in cards are of different component configurations. 
In this unit, about 24 of the slots are populated. There appears to be about 100 hand-wired connections. A wire connector attaches the backplane to the front panel switch and light display. The indicator lights, when operating, would illuminate either green or red. The entire unit looks handmade, and designed to be functional, and not a streamlined marketable product. These suitcase size units were primarily made of wood and not for commercial sale, and designed only for use with the fast RAN machines, which went out of active use nearly 50 years ago. There probably aren't many of these field service units left in existence. We were lucky to find this unit nearly intact. The overall size of the calibration unit is 20 inches by 13 inches deep by 7 inches tall. It was made by the Diversified Case Company of Whitesboro, New York. There is no information about how many of these were made, or what the cost would be, probably since they were only available to field service engineers. If anyone has more information regarding this history or use of these calibration machines, we would love to hear from you through the comments section. If you would like more information on the Fastrand mass storage units themselves, we have included a link to an earlier video we created on this topic, which you will find in the description section. We hope you enjoyed this informal look at this vintage calibration tool from the past. As always, thank you very much for your continued support in helping us preserve vintage technical info from the very early days of computing. One final surprising bit of trivia, while reassembling the analyzer unit, the name Syracuse, slipped down, revealing the name Albany underneath it. Albany, New York was another location of Sperry Corporation offices. Perhaps the naming of the units coincided with the location of the field service engineers who were going to use them.